everybody, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're looking at the commercial package Affinity Designer available for uh, Mac OS and Windows. It's about a $60 purchase, and I have to argue that it is definitely worth it. Now, I know out there there are some open source alternatives such as Inkscape, and actually it was about a week back on Twitter I asked for um, basically commercial or non-commercial alternatives to Inkscape. Now, I love open source and I love free software, but Inkscape is one of those programs that vexed me. I just ran into problem after problem on it. The UI isn't as straightforward as I like. The workflow and I do not get along. And probably most importantly, the performance is painful, uh, especially when you start looking at like 4K resolution images or very high resolution images and you start applying a couple filters to them, they slow down quickly. And I'll show you exactly what I mean in a second. So the recommendation I got on Twitter, by the way, at Game From Scratch on Twitter, if you feel like following me, uh, was uh, Affinity Designer and another program called uh, Gravit Designer, which I may look at at some point in the future. And in fact, I actually want to do a uh, follow-up uh, tutorial of sorts on vector graphics for game development because the vector art style is actually getting more and more popular, especially as we've got um, more cross-platform titles available or more um, cross-resolution titles available. So people are wanting high-definition support uh, for their 2D based art. And the nice thing about vector graphics versus pixel graphics or raster graphics is vector graphics are stored algorithmically. So basically it stores your brush strokes, it stores primitives, etc. So it can recreate the art at any resolution, whereas a raster or a bitmap format stores each individual pixel. So there are advantages to two. And you're going to see in a second, Affinity Designer actually bridges this world perfectly. Um, so again, I've only really been using this guy for about a week now. I'm no expert at all. Uh, so we're just going to do a very quick, brief hands-on. But first, we're actually going to start with Inkscape. Uh, now, Inkscape, here I've opened up a uh, vector file that I've downloaded off the web. It's a Gundam, in case you don't recognize it. And I'll show you firsthand where Inkscape kind of falls down a bit, other than just usability. And here is uh, the vector graphic loaded. And here you see I'm scrolling around. The performance is okay but when i start adding filters on that literally grows down to like one to two frames per second and if there's like more than one filter on there i have to basically turn filters off and get this guy into um, outline mode the performance gets really rocky fast now let's zoom in you see the drawing speed that we're getting when we're zooming that is not great so now that is inkscape now let's go over here and see affinity in action same image same opening and there is a huge difference. And I can pan this guy around like so. So just on the performance level, it's night and day. And this is one of those areas, again, where Inkscape just got so frustrating for me. And unfortunately, there is no GPU-based render in Inkscape. It's one of those coming soon type features, but we're looking a couple of years out. So maybe in time, Inkscape will improve in this regard. Now, another aspect of this is going here into preferences. I'll go over here to performance and you'll notice something really kind of cool here. I'm running on my integrated graphics card. I'm not even using my GPU yet. So if I need to have even more performance, I can switch it over to GPU and get even better performance. So uh, the performance here just is just night and day. Um, now it is suffering a bit because I am recording in the background, uh, but as you can see still, super, super smooth. Now, another aspect of this that is very cool for, especially for pixel artists, such as um, probably many of you, is this feature right here. So I can go over here to the view and I can switch my view modes out. So we've got, you know, your your expected thing. So your vector mode here, pixel mode here, you kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like rendered. And you can see, obviously you're gonna get the jaggies, the edging, and this kind of is, there is pixel. There is vector. So that kind of illustrates why the, the, the advantage of vector graphics is they infinitely scale. So as I zoom in, Super crisp, zoom out, super crisp. And you're, what you're seeing over here is actually a mix of uh, pixel art done on top of it. So that's why some of this is aliased and some of this isn't. Uh, but what they can do here that's very, very cool is I can actually split it. So view mode and go over here and do split view. And what you'll see there is there's this dividing line. And you can actually bring it across so you can preview how your pixel uh, art will render. Uh, on top of that, then, we have uh, a lot of the most common things I need to do. Now, where I other things I really love about this guy is I come in here and I do new. I have options such as, uh, you know, not just for print. And that's where a lot of these things go really strange. I'm a digital media guy. I don't care about print at all for the most part. So when I come in here, I can actually do my dimensions for web or I can do for print or photo or devices. So I can do it specific to, um, you know, 
for a Nexus 5 or a 10-inch iPad Retina display. Or so this is dealing in the resolutions that you know we deal with, not print media people deal with. Although print media people are also well represented, you can also do a basically infinite mode. Um, I think it's called workbook or work pad, something along those lines. It basically doesn't care about resolution. Uh, but another neat thing I can do here is I can actually go up to 4K straight out and create an artboard. Sorry. An artboard will kind of scroll infinitely. We'll go ahead and create one. So you see, it's just a viewport into an, uh, an even larger shape that's going on in the background. And you've got all your standard shapes here. You've got your various different brushes available to you. You've got, um, you know, vector shapes such as this. And then, of course, you can take multiple. Uh, you can select them. And then you've got your various different booleans. Very easily understood on display. They're right where you'd expect it to be. So I can, you know, merge these into a single shape. Like so, we have our vector manipulation tools, like so. The cool thing is, again, corners can be kind of a pain in the butt at times. We can change our corner types, a quick and easy smart corner. Grab that guy and switch it to a smart corner. We can handles like that, or we can do fine contour details, like this. Um, pretty much what you expect in a vector tool, but the thing is, it's very accessible, very easy to understand, very easy to comprehend. Um, over here, you've got your full layering support. Uh, another nicety is your text tools are very solid, very easy to use. Basically, you can drag it out to the size you need it to be. It's one of those areas where other tools can actually be quite tricky to work with. Uh, you've obviously got your font uh, previews over here. Again, it does the sizing for you. If you've done any work with Inkscape text, you'll know how much of a pain text can be to work with or how non-intuitive the tools can be. You can do uh, various different styling on it. You've got fine-tuned control over your characters or your paragraphs. And then, as I was mentioning earlier, filters are super easy. So let's say, ooh, we'll put our text in there. I'll close this guy down. But we want to do a filter on this guy. Just a matter of go over to effects. This is the same for everything, not just text. Uh, but if I want to do an outer glow, literally just click it. I can pick my color. Like so I can and then pick the radius of our outer glow. And it's really, really simple to do special effects on layers, and they don't slow things down, which is probably the most impressive part of all. Um, and you know, if, if you've used another vector graphics program, you've got an idea of what the tooling here is, and all the tooling you will come to expect is here, uh, including a uh, transparency tool and a fill tool, which are very, very handy. Uh, on top of that, when we go to our freehand brush over here, so we'll do a vector brush, you'll notice we have various different brush strokes available various different brush styles, some of which I've downloaded for free. Uh, let's see, like so. And we can actually switch between them. Let's get up and try that again. Switch between them. Like so we can change up the brush size at any time. Like so, and the coolest thing is we can actually even do pixel-based brushes. Like so, textured. Oh, no, it wasn't textured. Image. So we do things here like laces, as you can see here. So very, very cool stuff going on here. Now, the next thing we can also do is you'll see right now we're in the draw persona. But in, here's another one that really shines for your pixel artist. Click over here, and you are now in pixel mode. And you'll notice you've got a completely different set of tools here for doing basically pixel-based art. So you can do your vector drawing and your pixel drawing in the same spot. And here you've got your traditional pixel tools, your fill tool, uh, your paint selection tool, your freehand painting brush. So uh, right here, for example, I can just fix the brush. And then we've got a uh, smudge tool. Like so you can see it in effect. And again, your performance is rock solid. Nothing really to complain about there. You've got uh, dodge and burn. You've got a uh, blur brush, sharpen a color pick tool, etc. So you've got your pixel tools built right in here as well. So you can mix your vector graphics work and your pixel work um, together very, very easily. Uh, obviously, you can do it on different layers. You can create compound layers versus compound effects. Um, yeah, pretty much at least everything I needed to do is in here. Now, again, I'm very early on in my exploring of this. So uh, there's a lot more functionality out there. Another cool thing is fully uh, pen aware. Uh, so pressure sensitive, angle sensitive. So if you are using a stylus or a touch screen like myself, um, it's fully aware of that functionality and works just absolutely wonderfully there. And then when you're done with your work, we've also got this guy. And this is your export mode, uh, export to various different presets. Go over here to the uh, file format. 
and you'll see the number of different formats available. It's pretty much what you would expect, and then probably a little bit more. So you can export as PNG, TIFF, GIF, OpenEXR, HDR, SVG, EPS, PDF, those last three being all vector-based formats, as well as PSD, which is your Photoshop document. So pretty much your most common formats are all supported out of the box. Uh, ditto on import. We can actually import a pretty impressive variety of um, documents. So go over here to open, you'll see uh, again, all of those formats and probably a couple more. Um, so here are your different uh, vector-based formats it supports. Uh, pretty much everything you would actually expect to be able to import, it does handle out of the box. So really impressive on that front. Now, uh, in being commercial software, there is a bit of a catch. First off, it is made by Serif. I don't know if I mentioned that earlier or not. You can go to serif.com to learn more about it. But it's available on basically the two different platform app stores. So it's available on the Microsoft App Store. It's a $50 purchase. Or it is available on the Apple Store. Um, and again, actually, this is kind of strange. Oh, no. Switched me over to Canada. You can see the value of our currency is crap right now. Uh, but it is also about a $50 U.S. purchase, I believe. Um, let me just switch that out. Which I don't know what they use. We'll try US. Yeah, fifty dollars. So uh, it's a fifty dollar purchase as opposed to you know Inkscape, which is available completely free. And as I mentioned earlier, there is also the option of Gravit Designer, which is out of the box at least free as well. So if you don't want to spend money, there are alternatives out there. But if you are willing to spend money for productivity, Affinity Designer is an excellent purchase actually it's it's one of those things that I have absolutely no regrets about buying and so I've decided to share it here and in the future again I'm gonna probably cover a little bit more on vector graphics uh, tutorials here uh, so you probably will see it again soon at some point in my future because this is definitely my weapon of choice for this kind of work plus also for um, UI design um, logo design that kind of stuff uh, that's where these vector packages really really shine and uh, yeah, that was it. That was Affinity Designer. I hope you guys found that useful. Again, I will put all these links in the comments down below if you want to uh, go ahead and buy it or learn more about it. Uh, head on over to either the app stores or uh, the serif.com website to learn more. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, uh, please do click like. And we cover all kinds of stuff here. Uh, if it looks interesting to you and you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That's it for now. I will see you all later. Goodbye.